Here we go. All right, so notes out here. Let's get into our continuing this section, I guess I'll say. <coughs> All right. So yesterday we ended, all right, um, summarizing the various, like, McLaurin series with which you should be familiar, okay? And by familiar, I mean memorize, right? We need to remember these power, um, these power series, all right? If you look in the book, in section 9, 10, there's more than these, okay, that we could memorize, but the um, AP calculus people have deemed only these worthy of your time and none of the other ones that are in the book, okay? So that's what we'll be focusing on, right? Because that's our ultimate goal is to, you know, get fives on those on that AP tests coming up here in May. So, um, again, just some, like, helpful tips, right? We had some, like, summarizations here, okay? So, for example, you know, most of these... Or, sorry, they all involve x to some power. Most of them involve factorials as well, and some are alternating, right? And so e to the x, right, that is all factorials, okay? So you're going to not just have the odds, not just have the evens. You're going to use all the factorials. And then it is um, not alternating. Okay. Um, and then, Sean, did you see the grades are now in? The test grades are now in. Um, number two, right, we have sine of x. Sine of x is alternating, right? It's odd. And you can remember that, right, because sine of x is an odd function in the first place, okay? You can also remember that sine, okay, sine at zero starts at zero, and the very first term is also zero, right? Okay, we have a zero, we start with zero and then go to x kind of thing. Whereas with cosine, right, cosine at zero starts at one, and so that's where our series there starts at one. Cosine is also an even function. It's symmetric about the y-axis. And so then you get all these even numbers there for our polynomials, right? Even factorials, even powers. Okay? And then, of course, our geometric series. Well, that is exactly, you know, the series that we saw, um, you know, way back when we were talking about sequence in the series first, right? And then the um, 1 over 1 minus x. If you remember, right, the, the formula for the sum of a geometric series was the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. But in this, you know, kind of like... Um, designation here, the first term is going to be 1, right? Because it's just x to the n. So, um, you know, when you start with 0, first term is 1, and then over the common ratio of x there, because you're repeatedly multiplying by x. Okay? So, of course, we're not going to just work with these functions, because we have, you know, kind of like we're going to, well, I guess you can see here, as we move on to, like, example 5 and 6 now, right, you see that we're going to now kind of take these basic functions and then from them, we're going to manipulate using like transformations or just kind of like building, okay? You can kind of think we're almost going to build from these kind of like basic functions. We're then going to build and create McLaurin power series for unique, you know, functions like sine of x squared. Or later, we're going to look at e to the negative 3x minus 1 over 3, okay? And build that from our given series there. All right, so that's kind of the goal for today. Take these basic series, right, and we're going to build them into, you know, whatever designated uh, function we're given. And then maybe do a few other things uh, with it as well. Okay, so number example five here, we're going to find the Maclaurin power series, all right, for f of x equal to sine of x squared. All right, so again, might be helpful here to, for us to write out our first few terms. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the old faithful, you know, um, writing, out the, uh, writing out the first couple terms. I'm going to do the first four. So it'll be f of zero, f prime of zero, over 1 factorial x to the 1 plus f prime prime of 0 over 2 factorial x to the 2 plus f prime 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 of 0 over 3 factorial x to the 3. And I do. I go up to the fourth term. Okay, f, fourth derivative of f, <coughs> excuse me, of 0 over 4 factorial x to the 4. All right? And then, of course, plus dot, 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 infinitely more, right? <coughs> And again, we do this, right, just to kind of help us navigate what exactly we're trying to find here. So the old way of doing things, right, this is what we would do, right? We would start with writing out the first couple of terms, and we realize, okay, to solve this or to come up with the Maclaurin power series, we need to find f of 0, f prime of 0, f prime prime of 0, f double, triple prime of 0, and then the fourth derivative of f. So we, go, we would go over here and say, okay, well, f is equal to sine of x squared, okay? 
And then f prime, we need to know what f prime is. So f prime would be equal to, ooh, take the derivative of sine of x squared. We have to use the chain rule there. The derivative of sine is, that's right, cosine of x squared. All right, and then, but we have to do then what still? Times what's inside, so times 2x there on the outside. Okay, so it's cosine of x squared times 2x. And then we go to the second derivative. Now we have to do what? Product rule. Okay, so um, let's see here. It'll be the second, so 2x times the derivative of the first derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine of x squared times another 2x there because the chain rule and plus the first cosine x squared times the derivative of the second will so be 2 cosine x squared, okay? And then for the third derivative, well, it just becomes too complicated. Okay, right? This is, this is a lot because now you're going to have like uh, a product rule again and it's just going to get messier and messier and messier, all right? And it's a lot for us to do. And so maybe there is a better way, right? <clears throat> and in fact, there is a better way. All right, we could still evaluate here and see, okay, you know, we're going to get... Uh, when we plug in 0 here, we'll get 0, and 0 here, we get 0. And here, for this one, we'll end up getting 2. And we plug in the zeros there and stuff like that. Okay, like evaluate it at x equals 0. Okay. But this is awfully close to which one of our power series? Sine of x, right? So sine of x, we know to be x minus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial plus dot 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 you get the idea right <clears throat> and that's equal to of course then the sum here 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial <clears throat> Okay, so we've got sine of x. Well, what's sine of x squared going to be then? Well, all we need to do here to get sine of x to become sine of x squared is replace x with what? X squared, x squared right? And so that's what we're going to do. Sine of x squared now. Well, if this x, okay, is replaced just by an x squared and we're going to equal to this thing, what do all these x's have to be replaced with? x squared as well. And so this is going to equal then x squared minus x squared to the third over 3 factorial plus x squared to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x squared to the 7 over 7 factorial plus dot dot dot. I think you get the idea right at that point. I'm also going to go and go ahead and sub in the x squared into my summation there too, right? The series. So n equals 0, negative 1 to the n x squared to the 2n plus 1, bless you, over 2n plus 1 factorial. <coughs> okay. So I know it's a lot of work to just do all that, do that simple little substitution there to write it out. Okay. <coughs> bless you. But that is, that's it. There's our series right there. Okay. We could probably simplify it a little bit, right, just because we have powers raised to powers, and we should be able to simplify here. So I am going to go ahead and do one more step here and put us through that process. But, I mean, ultimately, that's the answer. That's all there is to it. Okay, we just, we just do a change, you know, a quick substitution. Um, so it becomes x squared minus x to the 6 over 3 factorial uh, plus x to the 10 over 5 factorial minus x to the 14 over 7 factorial plus, again, you get the picture. And then we can simplify our summation here to st still be negative 1 to the n. x to the 2 to the 2n plus 1, how would that simplify here in our series? x to the 2 to the 2n plus 1 would be x to the what power? 4n plus 2, right? That n, sorry, the 2 distributes both to the 2n and to the 1 there. So it's x to the 4n plus 2 over 2n plus 1 factorial. Okay? And so that we'll say is our final kind of simplified answer there. Yes? Sure. 
I would say yes, yes, I would say yes in general. Mm -hmm. You can also think of this as like a composition of functions in a sense, right? I mean, what did we do? We took, you know, sine of x, our power series there, and we composed x squared. So it's kind of like f of g of x, right? We just plugged the x squared in, and so the x squared just goes in place wherever you saw the x's in the past. Okay. So it's basic, basically, yes, we can do kind of these transformations and things, yeah, to help us out, or compositions at least, I'll say, too. Okay? So let's take a look here at letter uh, number six. Sorry, not letter six. Oh, sorry. Yep. Did you need to see these last steps right here? No, the whole thing, sorry. whole thing, huh? Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right. Any questions on example five there? Pretty straightforward. Okay, so now we look at example six. Find the Taylor power series for f of x equals e to the negative 3x minus 1 all over 3 centered about 0. All right, so oof. where should we maybe start with this one? What power series should we start with here? Of course, e to the x, right? Also important to note here, right, it's centered about x equals 0. This, right, e to the x power series, it's the Maclaurin series. This e to the x, this series... Okay, that describes e to the x, that is for e to the x centered about zero, right? If we centered it elsewhere, we're going to need to end up using like kind of a horizontal shift or something like that, okay, to account for that. But that's, we're not going to have to worry about not being centered at zero today. Everything's going to be centered at zero, which is where all these originated from, okay? So you're right, we're going to start with e to the x, all right? I'm not going to go through this whole process of writing out our polynomial. We already can kind of see it's going to get messy to take the multiple derivatives of this thing. So instead, I'll just jump right into writing out e to the x, which we know is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, plus x cubed over 3 factorial, plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. How many did I go up to? Okay, yeah, plus dot, 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 plus, and then x to the n over n factorial like that. Okay. So I'll also write the general term there at the end. <coughs> All right. <coughs> so now we want to start building our e to the x towards this e to the negative 3x minus 1 all over 3. Okay? And you kind of want to work from your e to the x term outwards. All right? So for example, we're not going to do divide by 3 first. Okay? We're not going to do minus 1 first. We're going to start here with that negative 3x because we first want to just change e to the x to now make it e to the negative 3x. Okay? which is going to just be a simple kind of substitution here, right? So we'll, instead of having an x, we'll plug a negative 3x in, <coughs> okay, because that's what we need is e to the negative 3x. And that means since I replaced x with negative 3x, what else, uh, what do I need to do over here on the right-hand side? Replace all the x's with negative 3x's, exactly right. And so if we do that, we'll end up with 1, um, and I'm going to like put things in parentheses here and not just not simplify just yet, okay? Again, you might jump this step and go ahead and simplify. But I'm going to um, do it explicitly just for the notes right now. Okay, so take a little bit, take a few more steps for, for um, this. Even the x to the n, this general term at the end here that I wrote, right? I'm going to put, put a negative 3x in to the n over n vectorial. <clears throat> now, what's the next piece we maybe should add in here to start working towards this right here? The, the minus 1, actually, yeah, we're going to do the minus 1 next because, because the dividing by 3 is happening to the entire quantity here. So we want to bring in the minus 1 first and then do the divide by 3. Okay, so if I want to put a minus 1 in here, I'm going to subtract 1 from the left-hand side. But if I subtract 1 from the left-hand side, what else do I have to do? Subtract 1 from the right-hand side. Okay, so on my left-hand side here, I'm going to end up with e to the negative 3x minus 1 equals, and it just takes out this 1. Exactly right. That's all that gets taken out there is that little, is that little 1. Okay, now remember, this 1... This one was our what term? n equals zero. zero. This was our n equals zero term. So now where we start with a new one here, I'm going to go ahead and simplify these in my next step too. So that's, I'm going to make that just negative 3x. I'm going to make this positive 9x squared over 2 factorial. Okay. I'll make this negative 27x to the third over 3 factorial plus 
81 x to the fourth over four factorial plus dot 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 plus and then here I'm gonna do some work here too okay it's helpful to break this up a little bit as well now let me show you how we're gonna break this up okay we're gonna pull the negative 3 and the X apart and in fact I'm gonna even pull apart the negative 1 and the 3 as well and so we're gonna make it this negative 1 3 and then x, and all of those will be to the n power, right? Because they all came out from underneath that n power there. So yes, qu question. Um, like this question was instructed as being eighty-one minus eighty-one. Yeah, got ahead of myself there. Um, yes. Um, because if you recall, right, we're we, we're saying e to the x, right, is precisely equal to this power series right here, right? Okay. Um, when we replace the x here with negative three x. Everywhere we saw an x, right, got replaced with the negative 3x. But then when we subtract 1 from this, right, I mean, this is like literally an equation that we're just balancing out. So we just minus 1 from both sides, and that's it. Not every term needs to be, just subtract 1 from both sides. Okay, that's it. Okay. Um, you can kind of think of this. I mean, so what does a minus 1 typically do in transformations? It shifts everything, what? Down 1, okay. Well, here's this sum. Okay, here's the sum that's going to represent e to the x. To shift this thing down 1, I just need to subtract 1 from it, right? Just move it down 1, and so only thing that from the sum, and so that will just cancel out that 1 right there. Okay, it doesn't need to subtract 1 from every term, just 1 from the, the total thing. Okay, so right, so we canceled out our 0th term. So now this term is, what term is this? Should we consider this to be? The n equals 1 term, okay? So keep that in mind. We're going to be using that here in just a second when we go to write the series. But we're not quite done yet. We still have one more piece we need to build in here, and what is that? Divide by 3. So, again, just like you would for an equation, this is an equation, right? We're just going to divide both sides by 3, or you can think about multiplying by one third if you prefer, you know, however you like to. But imagine, yeah, we're just going to divide both sides by 3, and then everything here is going to get divided by 3 as well. Okay? <clears throat> And again, the idea is when you divide by 3 in an equation, right, everything on the left-hand side gets divided by 3, everything on the right-hand side gets divided by 3. So we have to distribute it out kind of thing. All right, so now we end up with what we wanted. <clears throat> and then I'll just divide everything by 3 here. So the first term is now going to be what? Negative x. Negative, yeah, ne I'm going to put negative 1x, but yep, uh-huh. And then what's the second term going to be? 3x squared, and I think you guys get the idea from there, right? Just keep dividing by 3. So... 9x to the third over 3 factorial plus 27x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus dot 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 plus. And then here I need to divide this by 3 as well. So I'm going to put the 3 in the denominator here. Okay, right? Dividing by 3, we'll put a little 3 in the denominator there. So <clears throat> notice here, it's not 3n factorial, it's 3 times n factorial, right? If there were parentheses, so I guess maybe I should group this here just so that way you can see it's only the n being raised, or n factorializing. I don't know if that's right or not, okay? All right, so this is still the n equals 1 term right there, okay? Because again, we want to write the Taylor power series. That means we want to come up with a sigma notation here. All right, so sum to infinity, and where are we going to start? n equals what? One. Right. Now we're going to start at 1. We start, it was originally at 0, right? But we canceled out that 0th term. We're starting now at 1. So we're going to start from n equals 1, okay? And then we're just going to use our general term here. This is it, right? This is what happened. This is how our general term transformed. Is this the best we can do, though, with our general term? Or can we simplify that some more? Okay, right. We have a 3 to the n and a 3 to the... What power would this be? One. one. And when you divide, what do you do when you have the same base? What do you do with your exponents? Subtract. Subtract. So this becomes then negative 1 to the n, 3 to the n minus 1, x to the n, all over n factorial. Like that. Okay, question mark. Um, at the very beginning, <coughs> couldn't you have just um, separated your um, equation? At the very you're saying like break up the equation like yeah. one like e to negative three x over three minus one third kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, you could have done it that way too, mm -hmm. and built it that way instead. Mm -hmm. Wait, why is it n minus one? Three to the n minus. Oh, um, well, well, we had originally here, yeah. right? Notice the three is no longer in the denominator. Oh yeah. Come base, subtract the exponents. Yeah. Three to the n minus one. 
Matthias. I see what you're saying. Um, the purpose here is because later we're going to be taking the derivative and integrating these things. <laughs> okay, so why is it helpful that we separate everything out like this? Because imagine um, taking the derivative of this thing with respect to x, the only term that we need to concern ourselves with is which part of this? The x to the n. Negative 1 to the n, 3 to the n minus 1 over n factorial, those are all going to be constants. And so by pulling out that 3 and the negative 1, we can then just take the derivative of this thing and then worry about this you know, as the coefficient. Otherwise, we'd have to use the chain rule every time we want to take the derivative, which would be much more work. So that's the purpose of simplifying it or separating it out. Yeah? The way that I did it, I did how we did the old equations with like, you take the x and then x prime and evaluate the old x. Yes. yes. I did it that way, but I didn't do it as divide by every single time. I did one third times um, e to the negative. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I got the same answer. Is that all right? Yeah. I mean, again, yes, yes, it is. Again, it's up to you. Obviously, for a problem like this, you wouldn't yeah. want to do yeah. that, right? But, and I would really, and that's why the encouragement is to get to this point, just be able to like kind of build it, because we're going to most likely have more stuff more akin to this, whereas it's going to be too much to try and, you know. But, it, of course, you can use that method, because it does, yeah, it does work, of course. All right, so let's proceed. Let's proceed here. All right, we're going to <coughs> find the first three non-zero terms in the Maclaurin series, g of x equals x cosine x minus sine x. Okay, so now... What, whoop, I'm off the screen. There we go. What power series do we need to incorporate in this? What power series are going to be included in here? Cosine x, sine x. We're going to use both, okay, together. So I'm going to start with like the, the stranger one here with the x cosine x. So let's write out the first couple terms of cosine x. <coughs> All right, I'll. Um, Actually, I'll let you guys maybe think about this. So go ahead. You guys give this a try. Write out the first few terms of cosine of x. Since you're trying to do the first three non-zero terms, you want to do at least the first three terms of cosine x. But I'll give you a hint. You want to do four of the terms. Okay? So, and then go ahead and write out what you think x cosine x should be. All right? And I'll <coughs> give you a little bit here. So again, cosine x is one of those um, series, Maclaurin series, we should have memorized. <clears throat> well, if, if not now, then, you know, by Tuesday for sure. <coughs> okay, remember cosine, right, is an even function. So this is the even degree, even factorial. And again, this one, it's not important for you to write the nth term or that general term at the very end if you don't want to because the directions are different here. The directions here are just write the first three non-zero terms. So all we have to do is come up with the first three terms. We don't need to come up with like a general rule for the whole thing, okay? We don't have to come up with a general rule for the whole thing. We're just finding the first three non-zero terms, okay? So let me just write out those first. Again, I'd suggest four, really. I know we're doing the first three
All right, so. <clears throat> we take cosine x, 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, okay? Again, how can you remember this? Cosine is an even function, right? It is symmetric about, right, when, you, when I mean even, right, the graph of cosine, you know, looks like that. Okay, so it's symmetric about the y-axis. Okay, also it's helpful to remember that cosine starts at 1, right? Sine actually has 0 as its first term and then jumps to, you know, x. Cosine starts with 1 as its first term. And you can think of it because, well, where does cosine start? Cosine at 0 is 1, sine at 0 is 0, and then you jump to that x term, okay? So it's cosine starts at 1, and then it's all the even degrees and factorials, right? Sine starts at 0, and then it's all the odd degrees and factorials. Again, alternating. The first term for both cosine and sine are going to be positive. So 1 for cosine, and then, well, I guess really x for sine, okay? x for sine. I shouldn't say the first term. The starting term maybe might be a better way to say it. Anyway, once we have cosine written out, right, then x cosine is literally just multiplying both sides by x. And so you end up with the x minus x cubed over 2 factorial plus x to the 5th over 4 factorial minus x to the 7th over 6 factorial. Now, the next piece we need to do is subtract sine of x. And what is sine of x? We just got done talking about it, right? Sine of x is, well, what, where does it start? Okay, so 1x, right? Okay, and then minus x to the third over three factorial plus x to the fifth over five factorial. I'm going to do four terms for this one too. Minus x to the seven over seven factorial, right? Once you kind of get it going. And then plus and then dot, dot, dot. You get the idea. <laughs> okay, so there's sine, but what do we want to do with sine? Subtract it from x cosine x. So I'm going to just write like a minus and then like a little minus here. And we're going to subtract that entire sum, okay, I guess we'll really the first four, <coughs> first four terms there from the x cosine x. Okay, so we're going to like do this kind of arithmetic here. So we're going to end up with x cosine x here minus the sine of x equals... And then let's just kind of work through, do we have like terms here on the right-hand side? Yes. Okay, so for example, what's going to happen with the x here? Minus x, it cancels. Bless you. Bless your soul. Okay. Then we're going to have negative x cubed over 2 factorial minus a negative x cubed over 3 factorial. So I'm going to kind of put these pieces together here, right? Negative x cubed over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial. So far, so good? So far, so great. So far, so great. Ooh, even better. All right, so again, these are like terms. Why am I putting these together? Because they both have an x cubed there. Okay, they both have x cubed, so they're like. All right, so we took care of those. Now we need to do the x to the fifths, right? It's x to the fifth over 4 factorial minus a positive, so minus then x to the fifth over 5 factorial, <coughs> and then the x to the seventh. So negative x to the seventh, so I'm going to get still plus, but then I'll just put a negative x to the seventh over six factorial minus a negative, so really plus positive then x to the seven over seven factorial, like so. <coughs> okay. So in other words, if I factor an x cubed out of this first group, it'll be negative one over two factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial x to the third. Right, I just take the x cubed out, factor it out from there, like this, plus, and I'll do the same thing for the x to the fifth. 1 over 4 factorial minus 1 over 5 factorial x to the fifth, plus, and then same thing here, negative 1 over 6 factorial plus 1 over 7 factorial x to the seventh. And there are our first three terms. <clears throat> Okay, negative 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial is going to be just a fraction, right? It's just a constant, some number. Same thing with 1 over 4 factorial minus 1 over 5 factorial. And same thing with negative 1 over 6 factorial plus 1 over 7 factorial. So there's our 1, 2, 3 terms right there. Okay, first three terms. And that again is x cosine x minus sine of x 
first three terms. That's it. That's it. Those are your first three terms. <coughs> okay. We don't need to write the rule for this because that's all we were asked to do was to find the first three terms. First three not zero terms. Questions on any of that? Questions on any of that? <clears throat> okay, so example eight, evaluate the following infinite series. Now this looks like a little bit of a blast from the past, right? This is like stuff we were doing last unit, or so I guess really two units ago. Sequences and series, right? Okay. No, last unit, sorry, 9a, last unit, okay? We were asked to evaluate these series. So like, why are they showing up again here? Well, A, if you look at that, right, it may be a little familiar to one of our power series. What power series does this one match to? Okay, how do you know cosine? What gives it away? Okay, right, we have 2n factorial. We have pi and 3 both being raised to the 2n, and we're alternating, right? So alternating, check. Right? That means it could be sine or cosine. Okay? The 2n and the 2n factorial, that means we're going to have what kind of exponents? 2n is always going to be what? Even. So that means we have to be talking about cosine here. Okay? And in fact, for all of these, the helpful thing to kind of clue you in about what power series to use, focus on the factorials. Okay? The factorials here will be even. The only one of our power series that has even factorials, right, only even factorials, is cosine. Okay? Let's look quickly at letter B. So looking at the factorials here, these factorials are all what? Odd. Odd. So what power series would we expect to use here? Sine. It's going to be sine. Okay? What about um, letter C? What are the factorials here? Yeah, it's even and odd. Which power series uses both even and odd factorials? All the factorials. E to the x. So we're going to be using e to the x here. Okay. And then letter D, what do you see for these factorials? <coughs> All even. So we would expect to use cosine. Exactly right. And that's what we will be using here. All right. So the next question is, all right, great, Mr. Wade. We understand this looks like a cosine. This looks like a sine. This looks like E. This looks like cosine again. But then what does this actually mean to evaluate here? Well, let's take a look, closer look here at letter A. Right? Cosine of x, we know is, and since this one's in sigma notation, I'm going to also write it in sigma notation, write out the cosine in sigma notation as well. So cosine of x, right, is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n. And then what else is up in the exponent there? x to the 2n. And then what's in the denominator? 2n factorial. 2N factorial. <coughs> Okay. Well, we can see the negative 1 to the n piece. We can also see the 2n factorial piece. But then our problem here has simultaneously a pi to the 2n. So, okay, well, maybe pi is acting like what variable here? Or what part here? The, the pi is acting like the x. But then we also have the 3 to the 2n in the denominator as well. They're both raised to the same power, to the 2n. So can we not, therefore, combine the pi and the 3 together, right? Couldn't we then say right? these two things we can kind of put together because they both have the same power there and create pi over 3 to the 2n. Okay. So the only thing that's different about the thing we're trying to evaluate and the power series cosine that we know is that in the cosine that we know, x is replaced with what in our problem? Pi over 3. So in order to evaluate this thing, what are we really trying to what is this really asking us to do? Cosine of pi over 3. That's all it is. All right? Replace pi over 3 in for x, and you will get exactly what 
we're trying to evaluate here. <coughs> okay. So now let's back up here and really appreciate what's going on, right? Where did we start? Way back at the start of this unit, okay, we came up with the idea of sometimes we run in these weird functions like cosine, sine, e to the x, okay, that we can't, you know, necessarily um, evaluate easily, okay. So let's instead use polynomials that we can evaluate easily to kind of approximate these things. And we developed this procedure, right, um, to like find, you know, identify a center of our function, and then we would do a polynomial to however many degrees we wanted. The more degrees, the better the approximation, right? But then we realized that, well, if we took that approximation to infinity, right, the infinite series, we would then create an exact representation of our function in a summation way. And so then approximating becomes, you know, precise, precisely our function here. And so when we want to evaluate cosine of pi over 3, that's the same thing as evaluating pi over 3 in for x in our little summation there. It's the exact same thing. These, this sum and this function are exactly the same, okay, um, representation of that, whatever this idea is that we call cosine x. And so we plug pi over 3 in for x. That's exactly what we need. And so what is the cosine of pi over 3? One half. And that's our answer. So now we're seeing, seeing some new series, some new series, right? In the past, when we, when we had an infinite series, there was only one kind of series whose sum we could find, a geometric series. But now using power series, we can come up with some other sums too, using what we know. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at letter B now. <coughs> okay, letter B, well, we said this was going to be what function again? Sine of x. Okay, for this one, because it's not written in sigma notation, it's written out as the first couple terms. That's what I will do to kind of help us match it, too. So I'll write out sine of x, which starts with x, and then it'll be minus x to the third over 3 factorial, right? We're using our odd um, powers and um, factorials there, plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, uh, whoops, minus x to the seven over 7 factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. They did the first four terms. I'll do the first four terms, too. Okay. And again, I'll maybe write a little clue here, right? Odd, so sine of x, right? Just for your own benefit there. Odd, so sine of x. All right. But, of course, does sine of x perfectly match this? No. Well, what are some aspects that we are missing here? Okay, we're missing an x in every term. How can we account for that? How can we make this match this? What would we need to do to this side? Divide everything by x. Exactly right. So we're going to divide each of these terms by x. So I'll just kind of put like a whole big like divide by x there and a divide by x there. And so we end up with sine of x over x equals, and then, well, that will give us 1 minus x squared over 3 factorial plus x to the 4 over 5 factorial minus x to the 6th over 7 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. Okay. <clears throat> we're closer, but we're not quite there yet. What aspect are we missing still? Every term in here has a 4, right? None of our terms here have 4s. So we can clearly see to make that 1 become a 4, which, yeah, we just need to multiply both sides by 4. So 4 minus 4x squared over 3 factorial plus 4x to the 4 over 5 factorial, minus 4x to the 6th over 7 factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> okay. And so, what's the following, what's the infinite series? It is 4 sine x over x. <clears throat> it is exactly 4 sine x over x. We didn't get just a number here because our x's were still in the problem, right? Here, the x was being repl was replaced by the pi over 3, and so we, and we were able to evaluate to, a, to a, a single value. But here, the x's remain, and so we're going to have like a generic kind of solution. All righty. Questions on any of that? So you guys go ahead and try C and D then, all right? Again, remember, we already established that C was e to the x, Right, which is 1 plus x to the 1 over 1 factorial plus x to the 2 over 2 factorial plus x to the 3 
over 3 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial. Okay. See if you can figure out, uh, I'll do one more, x to the 5 over 5 factorial. Okay. See if you can figure out what the pattern would need to be in order to um, match this. Okay. And then we said d was cosine, so cosine of x, right, that's equal to 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial plus <clears throat> x to the 6 over, oh, minus x to the 6, over 6 factorial, okay? <coughs> so go ahead and see if you can figure out what you would need to do to your e to the x or your cosine x there to make it match <coughs> what we've got here. Would that be enough? So 2 would give you the right numbers, but what about the signs too? Right? So think about what, you would, what else you would incorporate there. So you're, so, right, you don't want to have the x in your x mark there because if you look in your actual series, there's no x there. So what you do is the negative 2 to the n. Mm, there's no n's in your series either though, right? It's just, what should your x mark be? Just x. Just x. Just x. Mm -hmm. There's no x's, there's no n's in your, in your sum. But how does it go up then? Because you're doing powers of it. Now, I understand this is sort of tricky, 
what I mean. Let me go ahead. I mean, what? So what? Yeah, I see you're trying to do a root x there. So yeah. You're trying to get the e kind of like by itself. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what to do. That's that's just right. right. The issue is if you, if you root x this side, you root x the entire quantity. You got addition. You can't like break up the root x of the addition. How did you tell that the x fraction in the first place? So what I what I was just thinking about myself off the top of my head here. I mean, you can um potentially say, for example, you know this term. Right? Has to match to this one. Right? So why not set them equal to each other? Right? And potentially solve that way. And then you do the same thing here. Set these equal to each other. You know, solve that way. I think that'll be better. That might be because here you, you get the square root to be plus or minus, I guess, mix of two. Um, but here you can do it match up. And I can do the same kind of idea here. You just get to take a term from there and set equal to a term from yours and then just solve for whatever, you know, x is. I think you get the idea. <laughs> Yes. Right, so you want to know, normally you want all the way, you have to throw in the negative ones at the end, right? But in this case, right, we're doing the negative ones at the end in a series, right? So what you could do, what you could do, what is e to the x as a series? Right? It's, yeah, it's, so it's like it's x, um, x to the n over n factorial. And they can put in all the equals. Or oh, sorry, for you to be the 2, though, so you replace the x with 2. But the way you get would be then 2 to the n over n factorial, and then you put all the equals. Okay. Right? Yeah. And so, so right, you can write it out. Let me write it out while I'm talking about this. <laughs> okay, so e to the x is. Uh, Right? So you were like, oh, I think it's e to the 2, but it doesn't alternate. <coughs> so, right, we're not really sure what this is, but we know that it needs to be. Michael, which score scores? I'd honestly be the happiest. Right? This would not work. Well, now watch this. Negative 1 and 2 are both being raised to the end. So wouldn't that be the same thing as? And so then it's e to the what? Could it be to the negative Exactly right. Okay. All right. So letter C, e to the? Negative 2 is our answer there. All right? E to the negative 2. All right? Um, that would yield what we need, right? 1 minus 2 plus 4 over 2 factorial minus 8 over 3 factorial plus 16 over 4 factorial minus 32 over 5 factorial, etc. Okay? If you have trouble with this, an idea that I kind of like, you know, thought might work here, and I'll check it over with Mr. Golf just to make sure that the strategy works. But, but what are we trying to do here? We're trying to make sure that all of our terms, right, we, we want to get this x squared over 2 factorial to match, in this case, 4 over 2 factorial, right? We want to get the x cubed over 3 factorial, in this case, to match 8, negative 8 over 3 factorial. Well, what if we just took, for example, these two terms that we want to match, right? And we take that negative 8 over 3 factorial and set it equal to the positive x over 3 factorial. Well, the 3 factorials would cancel. We'd multiply both sides by 3 factorial. You get negative 8 equals x to the third. And so x would be what? Negative 2. Well, where does this x go? Well, it's e to the x was this. What then do we plug in? Plug in negative 2 for the x, and boom, there's your answer. What about letter D here? What is this function? Infinite series. Cosine of the quantity x squared. Okay, that is our answer there. Okay, again, maybe just for consider, and just consider, you know, well, let's, again, what, what do we want to match up? Let's say we want to match up the negative x to the fourth over 2 factorial and these, these first, you know, these two terms right here. We want them to match. What kind of thing will help them to match? Well, negative x to the fourth over 2 factorial is going to equal negative x to the second over 2 factorial. Get rid of the negatives and the 2 factorials. You have x to the fourth equals x to the second. And now maybe it gets a little bit funky here. We want to solve for x. So if I square root both sides here, then because I want to go from 
this x squared to this x to the fourth. So I want to solve for this x right here, maybe. This gets a little bit funky, but it does, it does work. Okay, gives you the x squared there. We replace the x with x squared. That's a little bit weird, maybe, but it still, it still, it still kind of works. So anyway, just a thought. Questions on A, B, C, or D? All right. Let's move on here to number nine. Can we not do the back? No, we must do the back. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we want to know when f of x equals 1. Well, what is f of x here? What is this function? It's, it's what say again? Sine. How do you know it's sine? Odd factorials. All right. So we know sine, though. Sine of x is x minus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial plus, you get the idea, right? That's sine. Is that what we have right here? About. Just about. What are we missing? The 2, right? All the terms have a 2, so we'll multiply both sides by 2. And so 2 sine x, then, is our function that we're dealing with up here. 2x to the third over 3 factorial plus 2x to the third over 5 factorial minus 2x to the seventh over 7 factorial. Okay. Plus dot, dot, dot. And that is equal to f of x. But simultaneously, though, we know that f of x has to equal 1. So f of x, which is 2 sine of x, has to equal 1. Or in other words, sine of x is equal to what? 1 half. What's an x value where sine of x equals 1 half? Pi over 6. That's our answer. <coughs> OK, that's our answer. <clears throat> okay. So far, so good? No, no, no math magic there? All right, letter B. Find the first four non-zero terms for f prime of x. What? Okay. Well, we have the first four terms here for f of x. One, two, three, four. Okay, and we're going to take the derivative of this. Okay, so what's the derivative of 2x? So, oh, we'll get to that. We're just doing the first four non-zero terms of the polynomial. Two. We'll, get to the, we'll get to what you're talking about. What's the derivative of 2x? Two. 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 Derivative of 2x cubed over 3 factorial. Well, the 2 over 3 factorial, I'm going to leave that because that's just a constant. So really, we just need to take the derivative of x to the third. What's the derivative of x to the third? 3x three three x squared. X squared. Okay, so I left the 2 over 3 factorial and just made it 3x squared there. Plus, okay, again, 2 over 5 factorial. Those are just constants. We can leave those. What's the derivative of x to the fifth? 5x to the fourth, right? You're right? And then minus, and then let's see, that's the first three. We need the fourth one. So then 2 over 7 factorial, and the derivative of x to the seventh is times 7x to the sixth. Okay. And so then let's let's simplify this sum. Okay, um, two minus. Now, that new coefficient there, the three, well, that is the lead term there of the three factorial. So if I simplify three over three factorial, what does that end up being? Two factorial, right? Remember that three over three factorial is sorry. 3 over 3 factorial is equal to 3 over 3 times 2 times 1. 3 is the lead number. If I just cancel those out, I'm left with now 1 over 2 factorial. Okay, I know the 2 could still cancel out, but we're going to hold off on that because, again, that 2 is kind of like part of our function there. So I'm going to leave the 2 still part of it. Okay, likewise the 5, right? The 5 is, is the lead term there too, so I'm going to leave it as then 2x to the 4th over 4 factorial. Minus, and then again, the 7 is the lead for that too, so it'll be 2x to the 6th over 6 factorial. <clears throat> okay? 
Now, wait a minute. Yeah, what is this? Two cosine, two cosine x. Wait a minute. What was this? Two sine x. Are we just saying that the derivative of two sine x is two cosine x? That's what we just figured out, yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! It works though, right? It better work. If we're saying that this is, you know, that we know from way back when, back in September, right, that the derivative of 2 sine x is 2 cosine x, it better still be true here for our, our um, Maclaurin series as well. And so that's exactly it. Yes. <clears throat> this is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times 2x to the 2n there over. Um, 2n factorial, or in other words, it's 2 cosine of x. So yes, we established using Taylor polynomials that if f of x is 2 sine of x, f prime of x, or Taylor series, I should say, is equal to 2 cosine x. And that was fine. <clears throat> Let's take a look here at letter C. <clears throat> if g prime of x is equal to f of x and g of 0 equals negative 1, find the first four non-zero terms and then also the general term for g of x. Okay, so given with where we're starting, we're starting at f of x and we want to find g of x. That means what do we need to do to our function f? We need to integrate, right. If g prime is equal to f, then that means g of x is equal to the integral of f of x. So now we're going to integrate a power series. <clears throat> okay. So far so good, by the way. I don't want to leave anybody behind here from letter B. Are we all okay from letter B too? Good. Okay. Or at least we're just so stunned that we don't want to say anything. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. <clears throat> all right. So let's um, let's integrate here, right? So g of x, well, <clears throat> anytime we do an indefinite integral, which is what this is, right? No variables, we're going to have a what? A c. So I'm going to start with a c in the front, okay? <clears throat> and then we'll go to these other terms now. All right, so let's integrate that first, the 2 to the, sorry, 2x. So integrating 2x becomes, well, and again, I'm going to write this more explicitly than normal. It'll be 2 times 1 half x to the 2, right? So I, I left the 2 out, and then I integrated the 1 half, or integrated the x to become 1 half x squared there, OK? Minus, again, I'm going to pull the 2 out here. Maybe I'll pull out the 2 and the 3 factorial. Yeah, I'll do that. 2 over 3 factorial. OK, I'll pull that out too. And we're just going to worry about integrating x to the third. Integral of x to the third is x to the fourth over 4, right? And then the next term here, <clears throat> uh, I'll pull again, I'll pull out the 2 over 5 factorial piece, okay? And then we'll just have to integrate x to the 5th, which is x to the 6th over 6. <clears throat> okay, and we're only looking for the first four non-zero terms, all right? So I've kind of got those, right? C, we're going to find C. There's my second, there's my third, there's my fourth, okay? We'll have more, of course, but we don't need to worry about those. Okay, now let's imagine what we did to our general term too. So our original general term was this. Oh, sorry, you're off the screen. I'm off the screen. We, our original general term was this. Now, what's the only aspect of this thing that we actually need to integrate? The only thing that's got an x in it is this x to the 2n plus 1. This negative 1 to the n, this 2, this divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. This is a constant. Okay, this whole thing right here is a constant. So we don't need to integrate that. The only part we need to integrate is x to the 2n plus 1, okay? Now, to integrate using the power rule, right, our power is 2n plus 1. What do we do to our power when we integrate? Add 1. So our new power is going to be what? 2n plus 2, and then we divide by that new power as well, right? So in other words, we're going to end up with still have the negative 1 to the n, still have the 2, but then it'll be 1 over 2n plus 2 times x to the 2n plus 2 over 2n plus 1 factorial. So I'm also going to write out that general term there, too, along with this, just to kind of make it easier. So everything stayed the same except for that x to the 2n plus 1. It became x to the 2n plus 2, and then we had the 1 over 2n plus 2 in front there for the, you know, the integration part.
Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's try to figure out the C value before we go any further. Actually, any questions up to this point? Any questions? Are we all still following along all right? Chugging along? Yes, Matthias. Um, yes, but we're going to hold off on that because I'll show you. We're actually going to put this 1 over 2n plus 2 with a 2n plus 1 factorial here in a second. So, Okay, yeah, question. Um, do you have to show, like, all of this work that you're going to solve No, you don't need to. Again, I'm doing it because it's notes, and I just want to kind of, like, very, you know, very much show all the, all the steps and stuff like that. Just couldn't you just integrate, like, the two? Yes, alternatively, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. We're going to get to that, too, yes. Okay, so... Um, how do we figure out C? How do we normally figure out C? What do we do? What piece of information are we going to use here? Uh, zero. G of 0 is negative 1. Okay, so that means we're going to plug in 0 where? For x, x right? 0, right? 0, 0, right? These, that's the 0 right there. G of 0 is 1. Okay, so all these x terms. So 0, 0, 0. There's an x in here. 0. Okay, everything in here is 0 except for the C. And what's it got to equal? So what is C? Yeah, it's just negative 1. Okay, that's pretty nice. And so we end up then with just negative 1 plus, okay, 2 times 1 half, 1. So we're left with negative 1 and then x squared minus, okay. Now, the 2 and the 4 we could simplify, but let's just put that 4 in with the factorial. 3 factorial times 4 becomes what? 4 factorial, right? If 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, and we multiply by a 4, well, now it's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And so we end up with 2x to the 4 over 4 factorial. And the same thing with the 6 and the 5 factorial. 2x to the 6 over 6 factorial minus dot, dot, dot. And the same thing here with the 1 over 2n plus 2. That will go into the denominator here with the 2n plus 1. And so we really end up with then just negative 1 to, to the n times 2 times x to the 2n plus 2 over 2n plus 2 factorial. Um, I see what you're saying here. This is going to be, I think, I feel like because we've integrated, I think now we have to start with like n equals negative 1, I want to say almost, which I know is like that, sh hmm. You'd be still be negative one, wouldn't it? Negative one is a zero to one. Isn't it? Negative one to the zero is positive one. So now we have to start with our this would be like the n equals negative first term, I think. Yeah, you're right. It would throw off that. Let me see here. Would it make everything else okay though? Negative two plus two factorial is zero, so one. Negative two plus two x is zero one. Okay, so that would work for then and then zero. Yeah, I think zero. Everything else would work, though. I think it would work then, right? Then if that's at the zero term, the first term, the second term, so on and so forth. But I'm not sure if you can start with n equals negative 1. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I think we could then, you're right, we would need to fix this to be just like that. And I think that would then make it work if we just say n equals 1 now. Well, no, because then, let's see here, if I did... 2, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 would be 6. We really do need it to be 0 there. Hmm. Mr. Lewis, can you take the, just the integral of 2 sin x and then use that? Right, and so that's, that's, kind of like, that's kind of like the ultimate thing here, right, is that we do end up with this is, this is going to be, this, this should just be 2 sin x there. But it, all it asks to do the first four terms, so let me, let me. Would the 2 be negative 3? Would that be the Okay, so just like those are our first four terms. All right. Now, what's your other questions here? Sorry. We could do it that way instead. Yeah, we could do it that way instead. But again, we'd still need to have n would have to start at negative one though for these other like for these. For example, if this is n equals one, this would have to be n equals zero, and that would work. It would make it x squared. You know, we have to start this at negative the counter negative one though in order for that to make that work for the second term there. So, hmm. Or I could, well, yeah. I think either way, we're, we're, we're safe here because we just had to find the first four terms, okay? But we, all, no, we also have to find the general term, too, g of x, which is supposed to be, hmm. I am not sure here. 
yeah, I'll ask, I'll ask about that. I'll ask about that. As far as like what, you know, what, yeah, the counter and stuff like that, because that does kind of throw things off a little bit. All right. Let me move on from that for right now, though. Letter D, okay. This is asking us to find what? The 19th derivative. 19th derivative of f at 0, okay. So one thing we could do, right, we could say, all right, well, f of x is 2 sine x, Okay, and we could then say, okay, well, that means f prime of x is 2 cosine x, f prime prime of x will be um, negative 2 sine x, and then f prime 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 of x will be negative 2 cosine x, sorry, positive 2, derivative sine is cosine, sorry, yeah, negative, negative 2 cosine x, and then the fourth derivative would be what? Back to the 2 sine x. So you could do it this way and say, okay, if f of x is 2 sine x, then the first, second, first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And so you know this will be the 19th derivative just because of the repetition of the, you know, the derivatives here, okay? And so it's really just evaluating this at 0, okay? So you could just like literally do negative 2 cosine of 0, which is going to give us what? Negative 2. Negative 2, okay? However, we can also use our polynomials here as well, okay? So, so understand, right, the 19th derivative, that exists in the 19th term of our polynomials, right? So the general term for one of our polynomials is, and again, we're centered about 0. It's all the Maclaurin stuff right now. f to the n, right, the nth derivative of f at 0, x to the n over n factorial, right? That's like the generic term for one of our polynomials here. We want the 19th one in order to find the value of the 19th derivative at 0, and so that would be f of 19, or sorry, f, 19th derivative of f at 0. And so that would be x to the 19 over 19 factorial. Okay. But we know that f, the term for that, right, f we were told up here, the general term right here, oops, I'll have to change. this general term, right, matches that. And so we have then negative 1 to the n times 2 x to the 2n plus 1 all over 9, oops, not 19, 2n plus 1 factorial. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So this x to the 19 has to match with this x to the 2n plus 1, right? This piece will match to this piece right here. This piece, right, the 19 factorial will match to this piece right here. And so then what is the 19th derivative of f at 0? What's that got to match to? Yeah, what's left? Yeah, the only thing that's left then, and I'll put this in a different color to highlight it. The 19th derivative of f at 0 has got to match this negative 1 to the n times 2 piece. So then it's a matter of figuring out what is n. Careful. 19 doesn't match to n. What does 19 match to? It must equal 2n plus 1. Subtract 1, 18. 2n, n equals 9. And so negative 1 to the 9th, you know that would be what? Negative 1, because it's an odd number. So we get negative 2 that way as well. Okay, why is this helpful? Well, because imagine this, we were able to take advantage of the fact that this derivative repeats itself. But what if we come across something like sine of x squared? Do you really want to do 19 derivatives of sine of x squared? The answer is no, right? Instead, we can use this Taylor polynomial to then figure out what the 19th derivative would be at 0 by doing what we just did right here, matching up the pieces and figuring out then what that 19th derivative of f at 0 would be. Okay. So again, I'll check on letter C. Ask about that. Yeah. You gotta post it on classroom. The homework's posted on classroom. The explanation or whatever? Yeah, I'll make a little addendum. Sure.